So it's been a while. <laughs> so we're out here near uh, Terenum working on uh, my friend's vehicle here. It's a 2000 uh, Ford Contour. It's got the 2.0 uh, four cylinder. I don't know if it's a Z Tech motor. I don't think it is because I believe the Z Tech was a non interference. So this might just be the regular 2.0. It's been a while, so I'm not really sure, but this is the third. I've worked on four different uh, Ford Contours. This is the third. There was three that were dark blue just like this, also 2000. Two of them were V6s, this one being the one four cylinder. My buddy owned two contours. He owned the one V6 of this, which um, I don't know if he still has or not. He might. I'm not sure. It did. It was a nice car, ran good. Went through starters, found out it was the wiring harness. So I don't know if he sold it or whatever, but it was causing the starters to fry for some reason by giving them constant voltage or something of that nature. Rats are eating hot wiring harness. And then there was, uh, I'm trying to think here, the other one that he had before that, which was a Z Tech four cylinder. It was like a ugly ass green. <laughs> I forget what it was, but that car ran, broke the shocks though, right after he bought it. <laughs> shocks just shattered, and that was one thing I told him about. That was a whole fiasco there. Um, like I said, and then um, my brother in law had one that was blue. It just had a bad alternator, but he scrapped it. I didn't get a chance to buy it from him. So, so this one here has a hundred and was it forty six thousand? <laughs> it's only been driven twenty miles since last year. Uh, it's actually not a bad car. <clears throat> it is pretty clean for the most part on this side anyway. Well, there's a little bit of rust. The other side is pretty bad with the rust. <laughs> not too, not too good. So somebody else did a tiny, but it was running. Then somebody decided it needed the tiny belt done, which is obviously 140,000 miles. It does. I brought it in here. We actually pushed it from the street out in front, and I brought it in here. I got the wheel off, and I got it jacked up yesterday. That's as far as I got with it. Um, they never put the tiny cover back on. Uh, he did put a new tiny belt on it. They did do the idler pulley. Let me turn the light on here so we can see. This garage has no power, unfortunately. There we go. So you can see the new idler pulley there, and then the tensioner, which is not right. So there's a problem with that, which it's a new one. I don't know if it wasn't set right or what the issue was. <coughs> so, but you'll notice no slack on this side, which is good. Then you come up here, and you see we have a lot of slack. Not anything hugely detrimental, but something's not right. And then obviously you come down here with the belt. And we can walk it off pretty much of the pulley where it's going to scrape. So, yeah, so they never put it back together. So, the story goes I got him to start it. Um, took forever for it to get just cranked forever, 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 forever. So, I kept cranking it. Eventually, it fired. Um, basically, sounded like a Subaru. <coughs> you know what I mean? Just vibrating all over the place. So I got out, I was like, okay, well the idle's not too, you know what I mean, like it's all firing on all the cylinders, it's just running like shit, you can see the whole motor vibrating. So I came out here to close the hood, <clears throat> I started to idle down a little bit, because I guess it was doing the the uh, variable exhaust or whatever, with the, that one there, the exhaust cam. So I was trying to variate the idle a little bit and bring it down, it shook even worse, got in the car, it was just about to throw it in drive, it cut off, and that's the last time it ran. It never refired since then, so I believe the jump time, I don't know how far, but uh, <clears throat> I only tried to crank it right after it set off, and I got nothing, so I was afraid that it jumped time, and I think that's what it did, because like I said, it never fired after that, and I don't want to start it or anything like that until I make sure it is in time. So we got a new uh, uh, timing belt tensioner, so I'm going to replace that one, they're going to try to set that one right. So this is the first time I've done it, I do know... There's a timing belt kit we got, um, which blocks these two off. That's how you time the top. But he did say that the other dude that was working on it had a bar in there, and he tried to tighten it or do something stupid and snapped off one of the uh, ears. So we may have to get a new cam just to line it up because I don't know how accurate that's going to be if I only have one ear to try to set it on that because it's not going to be able to hold itself unless I get the wrench and do some fiasco bullshit, which really ain't worth all that because who knows how much stress is on that camshaft now anyway from that so we're gonna see what goes on so I believe this is probably 
I guess an 8 millimeter or something like that. Okay, so you can see the valve cover. I got the air intake off. I got the, uh, the throttle cable out of the way. I tucked it back. So um, that's going ahead and been, been finished. So you can see the configuration setup for the coil pack and the wires there. Just a point of reference for later so we can make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and finish removing the 8mm bolt to hold it down. Disconnect the wires, take them off and pull the valve cover off and then we can hopefully take a look at the end of the camshaft and see if it's damaged or not. And uh, yeah, Let's see if we can find that socket to get the crank loose. Once we get the crank loose and I can take loose the water pump, um, pull the uh, bolts, you get that off, take the serpentine off, um, and see what we're dealing with with the belt tensioner. Okay, so we got all the 8mm valve curve bolts, including the one hiding right there that you can't really see. And uh, you have to get a deep wall socket, deep wall 8 for that one in the rear. Uh, we don't need to remove that sensor, we can leave that there. It'll pull up over top of it, so just get your cruise control line out of the way there. We should be able to just go ahead and pull it up. better with two hands but okay there we go you know set that over here out of the way clean it up to make sure we don't get none of that down inside the spark plugs oh we got good oil huh they do look nice and yes he did break that cam you can see right there it chipped off You can see the notch is completely gone. So we still have one notch, but it's really not going to be true unless we could rotate. Oh, man, that's going to be that's, that's going to be fucked up. But as we can see, the engine obviously is out of time. Just from looking at these two, let's see if we can get the focus to work a little better here. There we go. But if you notice in the timing marks, you see this one. We have a slight slant. And this one we have a major slant, so we're out of time. You can see by quite a bit, it definitely jumped enough out of time for it not to run. So, we probably could get away really with just resetting that up top, maybe. But, like I said, I don't know. We really should get a new cam. That's what I would do. This focus is bad today. And we also need to redo that pulley, so I'm just going to go ahead and disassemble all this anyway, just to get everything lined up to where it should be. But we can see definitely how it's out of time right there. So, I guess it's far out enough that it, like I said, it just won't start. Not far out enough, I think, that it caused any damage, but probably we're damn close. <laughs> so, well, alright. When we get that apart, let's see if we can't find that socket for down uh, on the uh, crank there. Alright, so we're back on the uh, contour here. Um, as you see, I did put the, uh, the valve cover back on <coughs> from the last video. Um, this is the original timing belt. I did get the tension fixed. I don't know if you remember the slack before. And we got a new tensioner. So everything, I got the, that all in. But this is a non-interference motor, fortunately, because... As you see, I got the lower timing cover off, but not the very one behind the pulley. Um, we're about to get the pulley off today. I had a air compressor from the fella, and it didn't go above 90 psi. So, needless to say, that didn't break the the crank bolt loose. So, what we're going to do instead is use the pry bar on the 18 millimeter impact socket here, six point, just so we don't round anything off. And I'm going to wedge it between the uh, gap and the A arm right there to stop it and we're just going to bump the starter which should break it loose <clears throat> so I was just kind of line it up with the socket um, I did put the motor to TDC with the spark plug but from trying to get the slack out of the belt down there without being able to pull up the to get the well getting the pulley off the center it properly I couldn't get it in time and also that cam has cracked one of the pieces in the back some other dude broke off with a screwdriver trying to line the cam up so he is aware of that but we're going to try to time it the best we can with it. 
and we finally got a brand new timing belt to put on there because from that uh, tensioner being seized up the one the dude installed it chewed the back of the belt up so there's no point of doing all this work and having a belt that's going to shred up eventually anyway so we got a brand new Deco, uh, Deco belt he just picked up today as well as a new battery so we can uh, crank this thing so like I said I'm just getting this in position so well, let's see where the breaker bar is going to be and then I'll show how we're going to bump it loose with the starter here and then we can at least get that bolt out and hopefully break loose these two cams up here with the uh, Allen or the hex head there, star head, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so here we go. Let me get this lined up down there. <laughs> 